answer is dinosaurs invented flowers. <laughs> These birds migrate every year to the four corners of the globe, just like their dinosaur forefathers used to roam the entire world millions of years ago. But if the dinosaurs dominated the planet for so long, why? Why did they die out? What happened? Let's look at the clues again to see if there's any hope of solving this mystery. In 1789, in revolutionary France, death and extinction were everywhere, not of dinosaurs, but a whole class of humans. As the guillotine wiped out the French nobility, one man watched the carnage and survived. The aristocratic Baron Georges Cuvier observed the calamity that had befallen France and applied it to the animal kingdom. In Earth's long history, had whole classes of creatures become extinct. From his laboratory full of fossils, Cuvier thought they had. Cuvier was the first scientist to unequivocally establish the fact of extinction. It seems so basic now, we are amazed that it was ever doubted, but before Cuvier's time, first of all, some people thought the Earth wasn't very old, so it didn't give a lot of time for a history that would have included extinction. It was Cuvier who, by studying the anatomy, mostly of mammals, established without any doubt that there had been successive extinctions through time. Now, that may not seem very important, but if you think about it for a moment, you'll realize that without extinction, the Earth has no history that can be measured. If all animals were made at the beginning and nothing ever changed, you'd have no criterion whereby you could assess the age of rocks and establish a sequence of history by establishing extinction you make it clear that some creatures lived early, some lived in the middle, some lived late, and consequently, by establishing the fact of the sequence of extinctions, the Earth attains a history for the first time. Cuvier painstakingly dissected living animals and compared them with fossil types. As a result, he had an encyclopedic knowledge of animals and was able to show that some fossil animals did not have any living relatives. They had simply disappeared from the face of the earth. This detective work set the stage for Charles Darwin to establish a mechanism for evolutionary change, natural selection. Through this, he showed how species gradually replace one another in the struggle for existence. The Darwin system provides a close and continuous tracking of environmental change. Environment changes and organisms change slowly and steadily to match those alterations. It gets colder, elephants grow hair, and you have woolly mammoths. That's slightly oversimplified, but there it is. Now, if that was all there was, then there might be a much more sensible pattern. Life would match environments. Much of evolutionary change would be progressive because you'd have animals struggling with other animals, and the ones that were biomechanically more efficient would eventually win. Everything would get better and would track local environments. The problem is that on top of that, you have these very large-scale environmental changes, the catastrophes of mass extinction being the best example, which destabilize that system and provokes sudden changes well beyond the capacity of any organism to adapt to, then many are going to die. Just simply die as species, they'll be gone. At the dawn of the dinosaurs was Coelophysis. Lively and intelligent, it was well on the way to establishing the reign of the dinosaurs. Ironically, no sooner had Coelophysis got a foothold than the species was wiped out by a catastrophe. But rather than sealing the fate of the dinosaurs, this event gave dinosaurs as a whole their chance to achieve supremacy on land. For long before dinosaurs died out, the rock record reveals an earlier near extinction that killed off many of the early dinosaurs like Coelophysis. In Nova Scotia, the red rock is punctuated by a significant white line. It marks a catastrophic event. Below it, Coelophysis and other early dinosaurs have been found. Above it, Coelophysis is absent, but in its place are the remains of later, more developed dinosaurs. Here at this site, 
two dinosaur detectives believe they have the evidence to show how dinosaurs rose to conquer the Earth. At this white line here, we have basically a bookmark between two great chapters in dinosaur evolution. We see preserved here one of the four largest mass extinctions in the history of life on this planet. I mean, about 40% of the animal life that was on land quickly disappeared, became extinct. Well, here we have a large mass extinction. What you got to wonder is what's the cause? There are lots of ideas, but one that's very tempting to us is that this extinction coincides with one of the largest known asteroid impacts in the history of life. There are several different ways that it could bring about a mass extinction. Well, first you have this huge rock, which may be 10 to 20 miles in diameter, hitting the Earth at great speed. That's going to release a lot of energy into the atmosphere. Not only energy, but dust. And it's that dust that could block sunlight, that could interact with gases in the atmosphere to produce acid rain, changes in temperature, changes in the light cycle. It'll affect the creatures that are around directly, but it'll also kill what they're eating. So it'll cascade through the food chain. After that catastrophe, within 10,000 years, a large, a huge amount of lava poured out on the surface in this region. In fact, lava poured out from Nova Scotia to South Carolina, a huge series of lava lakes. We have a very unique record of this large mass extinction. The reason why it's a unique record is because we're sampling from a whole wide variety of environments. We have fossil lakes, we have fossil deserts, we have uh, fossil streams, and so we're sampling from the creatures that lived within those. And we're getting a very good idea of what the diversity of life was like, both before the extinction and after the extinction. The evidence for survivors are found all over these cliffs. Specifically, we find lots of little bits of bone, pieces of jaw, pieces of skull and backbone, the creatures that survived. First things we find are tiny footprints. This footprint probably belongs to a creature that looked like this, a small dinosaur no bigger than my hand. One of the typical survivors, a beautiful little animal, very graceful, almost bird-like. The other clues we found include these little bones. This is typical of the mammals and mammal-like reptiles that survived the boundary along with the dinosaurs. You have both forms. They're similar in size. They're similar in the fact that they survived the boundary. But for some reason, one group, the dinosaurs, becomes dominant over the next 150 million years. The destruction that wiped out so many species allowed the best adapted dinosaurs to fill the void left by others. In all their rich diversity, they evolved and flourished. The asteroid hits and uh, produces a whole spate of environmental changes, and then some creatures make it and some creatures don't. But insofar as whether you make it or not is dependent upon features that you evolved for other reasons and not because you knew that an asteroid was hitting, in some deep sense you get through a mass extinction by good fortune. But I don't mean that it's random in some technical sense. You get through for a reason, but the reason has nothing to do with why you evolved those features in the first place. So I think that would qualify in our ordinary language as good luck. And I would say, yes, most creatures get through mass extinction by something akin to what our language would call good luck. One thing that may have been very important in the dinosaur success over the mammals was their wonderful adaptations for running. That's something which sets them apart, as you can see in these two reconstructions. The dinosaurs are built for speed and power. The mammals are built for burrowing and scurrying about. When you get very large, it's easy to do it from this basic architectural beginning and much harder to do it from a mammal-like pattern. The kingdom of the dinosaurs was the longest and most successful reign of any creature on Earth. Our ancestors, the mammals, 
lived in the shadow of the dinosaurs for all of their 150